Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and this is Bee Fly Beauty. Today we're going to do a get ready with me. I'm going to do some actual eyeshadow on my eyelids. Can you imagine? All right, so I need to finish up some skincare. I'm debating actually, um, hey nudie, um, debating on going back to Paul, Paula's Choice. Um, hey, uh-uh, where you get that? Hey. I swear. Okay, see you later. He just stole some full florals and headed on out. <laughs> All right, anyway, um, I was thinking about trying the Drunk Elephant Vitamin C again, but I also want to try the new Paula's Choice Vitamin C, the one that's like the newer, more stable ingredients, um, and just see how that compares because my skin does really well with the typical ascorbic acid. Um, so yeah, we're gonna put on some, I have two right now. The one I talked about in my empties video, which is the Walgreens version of the CeraVe vitamin C, which is 10% ascorbic acid. And then this is Skin Actives, sadly. Uh, I dropped this whole bottle like after only having it a week. So I lost 75% of this. And this is 20% uh, ascorbic acid. So I was just kind of going back and forth between the two. I barely have enough left to even do. It's so sad. This is not expensive, but it's definitely more expensive than the CeraVe one. So we'll do some vitamin C and then some moisturizer and then we'll go ahead and get in on the eyes. I have complained about this for a long time, which is um, I do love warmer colors because of my eye color, but because of my skin tone, it doesn't always look good. So we're gonna play with a couple of things today that might lean maybe a little bit more pinky, and maybe that'll help a little bit, will help myself like it a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the CeraVe moisturizer with the e.l.f. Woe Glow. I mean, I don't even need this, I'm a greasy person. Like, I, I just like shiny faces. So, okay, couple things. I've officially gone back to therapy. I think I've had four sessions. I've been going every other week, which is a lot for me, um, but I need it. Um, between just relationship-wise, I realized a couple of things are going on. Um, when I was younger and things that happened when I was younger, I was very closed off and I just cried all the time. The cry part is still the same. <laughs> I cry for everything and it's really annoying to be honest. Um, but I used to not speak up for myself. Um, people that knew me when I, I was younger might say, oh, where well, you were so snotty and you had an attitude. Like, of course you spoke up for yourself, but I did not. I never really advocated for me, um, even if I was snotty and whatever it was. So I've slowly been getting to that. Um, I went from not saying anything to anyone that ever hurt me to finding a way to live with it. If that makes sense, like finding a way to not, basically I changed myself. What can I do to change myself so that this relationship isn't painful for me to live with? And then I was like, well, maybe just like not everybody is made for you and you're not made for everybody else and that's okay. And that's really hard for me because I, I am in some ways a people pleaser, not in all ways, but I want people to like me. I want people to know who I am and my true person. And I think uh, my cousin and I talk about these things a lot. The number one thing that hurts my feelings and makes me very sad is when somebody that I feel very close to doesn't understand who I am. Like they misunderstand so many things that I'm like, how do you, how have you known me for this long and you don't know that that is not who I am? This is who I am. Um, so my battery is gonna die. Stay tuned. And we're back. <laughs> Woo, okay, so anyway, I was talking about how um, I went through the phase of just doing what needed to be done to make the relationship work. So changing myself, not a bad thing, not a bad thing to change yourself. We can all make things better about ourselves. However, I was not speaking up. So I've now gotten to the point where I speak up in really important situations 
and I've started speaking up <laughs> maybe inappropriately. Like my, I cannot, basically my therapist said that I am in fighter mode. <laughs> Good to know. Um, so I've been talking to her about like how to keep calm in a situation, um, how to let things go in a situation, just managing myself um, while I learn to speak up for what is important. Um, very hard for me. <laughs> very, very hard for me. It's not like I've never spoken out. Um, I'm going to use like this coppery, taupey, like mid-tone shimmer. Um, I think it's Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, I've always been someone to speak out, but I don't know. It has a lot to do with my dad, to be honest. Like I just, he scared the bejesus out of me. Um, and it, in the relationship with him in particular, um, I don't think we have one anymore. Like I've had to go, like we'll use him as an example, right? When I was younger, cause he's an extreme example and it, it's a good way to describe like how my reactions have been. As a child, as a young adult, I would just cry in a situation with my dad and I wouldn't say anything. I would just let it go. And he would get upset that I was crying and blah, blah, blah. So. Then I got to the point where I wouldn't cry necessarily, but, and this, this is like in a typical harder, difficult relationship, right? So then I got to the point where I just let him be who he was. So this is the stage where like, I am changing myself in a bad way to make sure the other person is comfortable and a lot of times that person is in the wrong. So, and it doesn't have to be like this extreme of a situation, but this is like the steps I personally have taken in this area and it's definitely overflowing into other relationships. So this looks crazy so far. Um, I'm gonna now take the L'Oreal Paris. It's like the pressed shadow and this is like one of the best ones, Amber Rush. I'm just gonna use my finger for this. So I went from just crying, saying nothing to having conversations with this person, my dad, um, but basically placating him, making him feel comfortable, changing my ideals, changing my thoughts, changing my opinions to make sure that he was never upset. Now, if I were to talk about this in another relationship setting, it wouldn't be as extreme, okay? My dad is the most extreme situation. Now I'm in, where I am speaking up, I am saying opinions that maybe my dad might not like, um, and he's thinking I'm this crazy person now, and I'm like, no, I'm just speaking my mind now. <laughs> so the problem is I've gone off the deep end with speaking my mind, and I am not doing a good job saying those things in love because I think I'm just so fed up with keeping opinions to myself and again, those who are really close to me are gonna be like, you never keep your opinions to yourself. <laughs> but I'm talking about in specific situations that are uncomfortable for me. Um, like, there's a lot of times that I don't speak my mind with my cousin, who's my best friend. There's a lot of times that I don't speak my mind with Freddie um, because I don't wanna hurt someone's feelings, right? So it's not that I'm, the people that are close to me probably are like, I don't know, how this is who you are because I've never known you to hold back. I do, <laughs> I do quite a bit. Um, obviously when you're closer with someone, you feel more comfortable being yourself. And so I never, I still have problems with this, but just not to the extreme like I would have with my dad when I'm talking about like my best friends and my close, um, close people in life, just in general, like work, etc. So I'm to the point now where I'm basically out of control. My therapist has said you are in fighter mode. So that's okay. Like I want to be in fighter mode. I have never been here. Um, I just wanna be able to control it. I'm gonna turn my fan on. Like at one point I got where, um, like it's like I have no filter at this point. I'm not being mean, but it's like time and place kind of thing. Like I'll say stuff in public. 
I, I don't need to be saying that in public. I'm not wrong in my feeling. I'm not wrong in the situation. It's time and place. So I'm really working on that and how to control that. Okay, I'm doing, um, ugh, I can't think of names anymore. I haven't used eyeshadow in so long. This is the Lux Series 2 Iridescent Multi-Chrome by putting it up on the screen. We're gonna do this on the inner corner and on the brow. I don't know if I'm gonna like this. I liked it on the back of my hand, but here it's looking just not the way I want it to. Uh, um, guys, I don't like this. I'm gonna start over. All right, I'm gonna do a green. I'm gonna do a green eye, like a deep shimmery green. Okay, I'm gonna use this Urban Decay Glide On Pencil in High Vibes. It's like a deep um, olive with some shimmer. Oh, yes. So, if you've never been to therapy, highly recommend. I don't know that you really need to have like this huge situation or issue or problem or PTSD or anything like that. Like, it's so good to just go and talk about, um, things going on in life and just getting somebody that's like a second opinion basically to say, you know what, you're right about that. Or here's a tool to help you get through that situation that is probably not gonna change. So how can we get through it? It's just, I've said this before, but I remember the first time I went and told my mom and she was like, why are you going? You're, you're such a strong person. You don't need that. I was like, what the heck? It takes a really strong person to go to therapy. I know that um, a lot of people in my life go to therapy and believe in therapy and I'm so thankful. Um, I just think everybody should go, to be honest. <laughs> just experience it for a few times. Not to say you can't get stuff from books and all of that, but uh, I don't know. There's just something about talking to a person and having them really understand you and come up with ways to help and um, see you grow into the person you're supposed to be. It's just really, it's just lovely. That's all. Just really lovely. Um, what shadow do I want to use? Maybe I'll just do, I don't know guys. I don't know. All right. I'm going to do this green brown situation and I'm going to just do it on top of the green eyeliner. Oh yeah, that's nice. Um, I think and when it comes to my dad, I don't know, like, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but it's really hard to give up on a family member, especially if it's your mom or dad. And I don't know. I've tried really hard. <laughs> like I've done the work, I've made changes, I've gone to therapy and I just feel like at this point, you can't change a person unless they want to be changed. And I don't mean like change what they wear or whatever, but like you can't help a person unless they want to be helped. Um, my dad does not want to be helped. He is not in that mindset. I have separated myself and I think it's for the best. I am grieving. I have been grieving. You have to grieve the family that you thought you were going to have that you don't have. And there's only a few things based off multiple things that multiple things have told people, professionals have told me. And that is, you know, if they're not going to get help and you want a relationship with them, you have to accept them for who they are and know that that's gonna be your life with them. So for me and my dad, it would be me never having an opinion, me walking on eggshells. I'm 42, I don't wanna do that anymore. I love my dad so much, I really do. Um, I don't want anything bad to happen to him. And I care about him so much, like I would love a regular relationship with him, but that's not ever going, That it's just not happening. That's not what's gonna happen in our world. So, I just think 
stepping away and because for me I can't be if I can't be my authentic self I just really don't want to be around you and that means I'm going to lose some relationships in my life unfortunately and that's just gonna have to be what it is like <laughs> I can't I um it's just too much it's just too much no one should have to do that so if you if you feel what I'm saying please tell me but I'm like breaking off a relationship doesn't mean you don't care about the person it just means you're preserving yourself and um, after 42 years of trying to preserve myself and have a relationship, um, I've realized that I just can't do it anymore. So you have to get to your, your end, you know? And I've gotten to my end. So at this point, like each person is different in my life, right? I think, um, I'm not really liking this either, but it's better. Um, like I think for my dad and I, it's just not going to be a relationship and that, that kind of sucks, you know, um, it kind of sucks. I'm just going to layer, I mean, this isn't about the makeup today, but I'm just kind of playing around and I didn't fully take off the other stuff. So we'll make it look cute. I mean, honestly, that's just kind of life, too. You just keep doing it till it works, right? Why does this feel so dark? It feels so dark in here. I don't know if this is a fall look, but it's something. It is something. <laughs> I don't... I don't know if I like this. I do not know if I like this, but what can you do? If you guys have any good books, I read part of The Body Keeps a Score. I'm reading some other books, like self-helpy books, but um, I've only finished half of all of them. So I think I need to get back to reading those and journaling, but I'm really glad I'm back in therapy, guys. Really glad. It's, um, it's a pretty spectacular thing to find someone that you connect with and that's the other thing like Fred is Freddie's been wanting to go and he said that he's he's ready to try it um but you know he's like I'm afraid it's gonna be really hard and I'm like it is it is gonna be really hard it's some of the hardest work I've ever done um but it's so worth it um it just sucks because you might not connect with your first therapist and if you don't and you just give up, then, you know, you've spent time and money, which sucks, but you've not gotten anywhere. So I think that you really have to be um, open to the process of your first try not working and you're not connecting with that therapist and starting over because it is really exhausting saying your story to five people before you find the right one but to be honest it might take that long to really find someone because you have to find someone that you're willing to say things to that maybe you've never said to anybody else and that's really hard so i am so thankful that mine we clicked basically i clicked with her like immediately and i felt super safe you definitely want to feel safe with them and um, I'm not going to do any foundation. I'm just doing like concealery things. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> she started her own practice and we hadn't, I hadn't really been going to see her for about a year, almost two years, really. And uh, I started going back and I was really nervous. I was super nervous. I get nervous before I go every time um, because I know that I'm going to have to get vulnerable. I know I'm going to have to like put my words together. I don't know. I just want to be a better person and I want to be a good person to all my people. And I know I'm not always that. Nobody can be. <laughs> um, but if you're not working to do that, you should be. Everybody should be. Whatever that means to you. If that means it's, you know, listening to a certain podcast every day. Uh, but I don't, I don't agree with people saying, well, this is who I am and take it or leave it. For the most part, I get that. But we have created lots of habits, ideas, thoughts, opinions 
like don't tell me that you cannot change an opinion on something or a habit like that's so silly that's like well I'm not I don't walk outside so I'm never gonna be able to walk outside well then that's so stupid like you create the habit by putting your shoes by the bed every day and you put them on every day and you don't go on a walk and then the second week you go outside and you walk around the cul-de-sac or the house and then the third week you walk the length you know what I mean like you create a habit you have to decide to make the change and uh, some friends and I that we all used to work together we got together the other day and we were having this conversation like none of us like to be friends and in relationships in general with people that need babying I don't want to baby you like we are all adults now if you're 15 22 okay different but like if you're in your 40s you've had your chance you've done the things if it's not working let's make a change some people take longer I'm one of those people like it takes longer for me to make changes but I make the change I have people in my life that will tell me I want people in my life telling me hey you didn't really do that well um, can you try again or hey you've really been hurting my feelings can we talk about this I don't care how hurtful it is, I want you to tell me. And I wanna be in relationships with people where I can tell them as well. Um, I mean, in love and not being assholes, that's not what I mean. It's just, I don't wanna be a friend to someone who does the same shit for four years and complains about it for four years. If you're not gonna make the change, then don't complain. I cannot do that, I am not your mama. And it might sound harsh, but like, I know now, and it's so funny because people talk about this all the time, like older people. Oh, as you grow older, you just won't give a shit. I was like, I would love to get there. Well, people, I am pretty dang close to getting there. <laughs> pretty dang close. I, I am just like, someone asked me, like we went, when we were out with, um, when I was out with my friends that I used to work with, they're like, oh, have you talked to this person? Nope, don't care to. Like what, and maybe that's part of my personality type, like INFJ, like once we close the door, we don't open it again. It's pretty rare for me to open the door again. Like I feel like I've closed the door on my dad at this point. Um, now I did close the door on a friend a long time ago and we're friends again, but that takes a lot. Like once I'm done with you, I'm just kind of done. And that's not being mean, but like, again, it's, it's hard to think, oh, this person, doesn't enjoy my company like that hurts my feelings but there are some people that I don't enjoy their company and it's not anything that they did wrong it's just we don't click as friends we don't click as father and daughter we don't click as boyfriend and girlfriend like you're not going to click with everybody and this is me like speaking to myself you are not going to click with everybody um so I don't know I just uh I just want the people around me to be people that are really honest, really loving, really kind, really open to other people's opinions, open to making themselves better. And if that means that I'm not gonna have a relationship with my dad because he can't do that, then that's what that means. It's, I don't hate my dad, I don't hate anybody. Very few people do I really truly dislike, but I can't put myself around that. I just can't like I can't I have too much anxiety and medical issues related to that to even put myself there anymore that's so silly like it's silly for me to put myself in those positions again it's just a no it's a no it's a no for me dog all right I used the Too Faced chocolate bronzer it is really one of my favorites it's the best like mix I don't know how bright this is, but it does not feel bright and I'm really sorry. Um, I'm gonna use the Bespoke Blush by Essence. Sometimes these get a little splotchy for me, but the colors are so good. So I'm gonna use um, like a fluffier brush and see if that helps with the spotting or whatever. This is like a burnt blush so it's like a mix to me between a blush and a bronzer you know those bronzers bronzer and we'll do some mascara and then we'll be done because I took way too long on my 
eyes. I'm trying to get my life together. I'll do my mascara and then I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. It's just okay, it's not really what I wanted, but let's do a little bit of some lip gloss and call it a day. I use a lot of multi-chromes and then I use the Too Faced Chocolate Bronzer and then two of the Essence blushes. I went ahead and added this too. And then all I did was concealer and then I used the cloud powder. So I used both of these with the bronzer. And then I used the cloud, the Kosas cloud powder. I will say that I hate the packaging. I mean, it's pretty, but they break so easily. Let's see. And I got my hair done recently. I went a little bit more blonde, which is what I love. I feel way more like myself. There's nothing on this brush, I'm just blending. Today, I'm fixing a project up, I'm doing some videos, hanging with a friend, I'm not really doing much work today, so. Hopefully you guys have a lovely day. I'm filming this on Saturday. I feel like it's a decent look once my glasses are on. It's a little Monet-ish, you know? Anyway, let me know what you think about therapy down below. <laughs> There we go. No glare. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.